Ah, hello there. Hi. So you probably clicked on this video because you're looking to buy this expensive piece of equipment and now looking reasons to justify the purchase. And you probably want me to say this. This lens will up your photography game from a 5 to a 10 in no time. So go buy this lens now. You want it and we both want it and you need it. I have a link down in the description. But it doesn't work that way. I can't guarantee it will make you a better photographer. But it will make your photography life more amusing and you will probably come home with more photos sharp and in focus. I'm going to tell you more about it in this long-term review of the 200-600 G OSS lens from Sony. Let's go! So in wildlife photography terms, this is a fairly small lens, which makes it the perfect like run and gun shooter that you can carry with you all the time. And it weights in just over 2.2 kilograms and it's 318 millimeters long without the lens hood. And the way you transport it is obviously without the lens hood. And I usually have the lens hood like this. And this can fit inside of my camera backpack. And I have the F-Stop Tilopa 50 liter adventure backpack with the large ICU in. Uh, I had no problem carried around, but I usually don't have it in my bag. I usually have it like the camera on and I carry it this way or attach a strap to these anchors. It's not a problem carrying it around. And something I really like about the lens is that it has these hooks here that you can attach these anchors to. I know some other lenses that you have to attach the anchors on the tripod plate and I don't like that because I've actually dropped the lens like that one time. So if we're looking at the lens, we see that we have some switches on the side here and we're gonna talk more about those later, as well as a tripod foot that is really easy to remove just the screw here and the press of a button so you don't need any tools or anything like that to to remove the tripod foot which is also a plus and then we have the focus ring and there's two type of humans those who like the focus ring out front and those who like it in here i would prefer having it outside here so switch place it between the zoom and the focus ring but that's just personal preference and in the long run it doesn't really matter you get used to it then we have the focus hold buttons. There are three of them in the middle of the lens. So these buttons are customizable and you can customize them to do whatever you want. And I've tried some different ones. Uh, the most recent one is the focus magnifier. So when I press these buttons, the, uh, the focus magnifier opens and you can help to manually adjust the focus. But to be honest, I don't have it that way anymore. This button doesn't do anything on my lens because most of the times I accidentally press it. So I've disabled that button. One big plus about the Sony 200-600 is the internal zooming. So the lens doesn't extend when you zoom in or out, which makes it extra safe for dust and moisture and stuff to get inside the lens. Something I really like as well is that the zoom ring has a really short travel distance, which means that you can zoom from 200 to 600 in no time without any problems like using just your fingers. So speaking of internal zoom, this is a short little story time of when I first got this lens and I wasn't used with the internal zooming. So one of the first encounters I had with the 200 to 600 lens on the camera was a wolf. So me and a friend found a <laughs> carcass of a deer laying on a large field and we decided to hide near that field. And we spent the evening hiding with no luck. The morning after we discovered that the deer was moved. So something had been there over the night. And after a while we saw something on the other side of the field. Using the viewfinder on our cameras we saw that it was a wolf. So <laughs> this was such an amazing moment and the adrenaline start pumping and, and we spent like five minutes with the wolf or something and after those five minutes when the wolf had passed i discovered that i shot everything on 200 millimeters <sighs> so i didn't zoom into 600 because i usually i'm used to seeing the lens like extended the adrenaline and everything it was too much for me so that's something i have to live with and I definitely learned the lesson. But I think the photos turned out okay anyways. They are heavily, heavily cropped. But thanks to this lens speaks ridiculously sharp, I can still use the photos with some post-processing and such. Speaking of sharpness, let's talk about sharpness on this bad boy. 
So this lens produces really, really sharp images, especially at 600 millimeters. I find it a little bit less sharp at 200 in the corners, but nothing that is bothering me because I mostly use it at 600 and that's if you're pixel peeping, you can see that. And I don't see it as a problem. And I find the micro contrast of the lens is excellent. Uh, it's one of the reasons I can still use the, uh, the Wolf photos because zooming in and still have see the, the sharpness and the, that the photo still has contrast. I think that defines a good lens, at least for me. So the autofocus performance on this lens is, in my opinion, really good. It's fast and most importantly, accurate. So if you see the focus locking in, you know that it's going to be sharp and in focus. Having that in a lens is very important because most of the times in wildlife photography, you don't have time to miss a shot, the bird or whatever you're after. It's going to be one kilometer away if you miss the shot. So you don't have a second chance. So it's really snappy and it hasn't let me down in many situations. Of course, the Sony 400 or 600 prime lenses are better, but there's also a huge price difference there. So the focus limiter on the lens lets you limit the distance that the lens will focus at. So you have three options and that's full 10 meters to 2.4 meters, which means that the camera will only focus from 2.4 meters away from the lens to 10 meters away. So in that range, if you have like, like I'm sitting in a forest here, if I would have birds like five meters from here or a bird feeder or something, this would be a good opportunity to use that feature because then it will, won't like hunt from infinity or uh, like the grass in front of me and such. And the third option is 10 meters to infinity and almost the same thing, but it's from 10 meters to the stars. <laughs> this is good when you're having maybe a, an owl or something hunting maybe 20 meters away and you want it to focus on that and not the trees just where you're standing at. I don't know if that's a good explanation, but I, I think you get it. So the downside of this lens is that it doesn't have a full-time manual focus override. If you turn the focus ring while shooting in autofocus, nothing happens. So you need to switch to manual focus on the lens to be able to do that or in the camera. But I've assigned the AEL button on the camera to act as manual focus. So when I press the button, the camera is in manual so I can change like, the manual focus. And when I release, it goes back to autofocus. The autofocus is completely silent when you're shooting uh, videos and such, which is a huge plus if you're recording audio when you're filming. I know on my 500 f4 Sigma lens, this is a problem because the lens makes a lot of noises when, when it's just like focusing and the, the stabilization of the lens. So when shooting handheld footage with lenses like this, it's important to have good stabilization. And you have three modes. So you have mode one, which is compensating for movements both horizontally and vertically. And this is good for like overall handheld shoots, like for overall photography. Then you have mode two, which compensates for movements vertically and not horizontally. So this is good for panning shots from side to side, like a, a racing car, a sports field or wildlife. Maybe there's a bird flying past you pretty low and you're panning from side to side. This is where mode two is good. Then you have mode three and it's for unpredictable action shots. So this mode enhances the viewfinder. So you don't actually see the, the stabilization happening in the viewfinder. It's only happening when you're pressing the shutter. So mode three could be used for birds in flight, for example. But most of the times when you're shooting birds in flight, you don't want any stabilization at all because you're, sh you're already shooting at really high shutter speeds. It won't really help. It could potentially ruin your shot. So my tip is to turn off the, the stabilization when you're shooting version flight. I'm really happy with the stabilization and how it works on this lens. I can easily handheld six millimeter shots without problems. I'm having some issues with the, the light coming through here. So I'm sorry for the bad lighting. Something I really, really, really like about this lens is the characteristics of the out of focus background. It has this kind of prime feeling to it. The subject gets this kind of 3D pop, which I haven't seen on other zoom lenses. So just that is worth the money, in my opinion. Can I recommend this lens to you? Definitely. This lens has been in my kit now for 
one and a half years and I'm so happy with my purchase and if you're out for a lens that will handle most situations really well this lens is for you because you have the sharpness you have the autofocus you have the weather sealing like the build quality and you have basically everything and I think you get a lot for your money spent and but it's and so euros yeah but it's 1700 euros so yeah I know it's 1700 euros come on but like yeah I know it's 1700 euros yeah but it's 1700 euros but yeah, like when I bought it the price was way higher and I still think it's a good purchase so what are you talking about well I say it's a great lens for the money it's a lot of money but it's worth it in my opinion I'm gonna do a comparison video about this 200 to 600 versus the Sigma 100 to 600 Sony FE lens and if you want to see that subscribe to the channel if you aren't already hit that like button if you like this so have a good one and I'll see you in the next video bye